everyone so I am going to walk you through step by step how to create the pages um, of my school days mini album um, if you'd like to see the you know the walkthrough video of my project you can check that out um, on my youtube channel there is a video um, so let's get started it's actually pretty simple oh by the way I also did a cover video um, that I will link in the description um, the step-by-step -step instructions on how to create the cover, the chipboard cover. All right, so let's start off with, so this album, simple construction, um, this album has three page groupings. Um, yeah, I guess we could call it that. This is one, pages one and two, do it that way, three and four, five and six. Um, and then there's pockets, and then there's a waterfall over here, so we will go through all of that in this tutorial. <clears throat> so, the base pages um, are basically a sleeve. I happen to have one here that I did in black. Um, they kind of look like this. Oh, there you go. So what you'll need for that is you're going to want to cut... Let me see how many of those you need. You're going to want to cut three pieces of whatever color, whatever cardstock you, base color cardstock you choose. Um, cut three pieces at six inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. No, I'm sorry. Let me measure that. I think my note is wrong. Yeah, actually it is. Six, six inches wide. Holy moly, by seven and a half inches tall. Okay. And then you're going to put it in your scoreboard. You're going to score it at a half an inch on each side. See the score mark there? And then we're just going to go ahead and burnish the fold and burnish on that score line. Do the same on this side. Then you're going to also want to cut three pieces that are six inches by seven and a half inches. Sorry, that light is just way too bright. So six by seven and a half, and that's going to be the piece that creates the sleeve. So here you can use score tape, or you just can use um, your wet glue. But what I did is before I scored it, I cut, I just angled the corners, all four corners. All right, and that just makes it easier with tags that slide in and out. Um, they don't get hung up on the um, corners. So I take your favorite adhesive. Mine just happens to be art border glue. <clears throat> We're going to lay this down, line up the corner. I find it easiest to line up the corner. If anybody knows how to do this easier, then please let me know because this is the best way I could find to do it. Whoops. All right, and then... Put some adhesive on the other side. Really doesn't take much. And then just go ahead and line that up and close up your, your base page. Okay, and then you have something that looks like that. Okay, these, I call these a base page. All the other flaps and pockets and doodads and all the other stuff are built on top of this. So you're going to want... Um, since I only did three pages in my book, I only need three of these. If you want to do six pages, you can make six. If you want to do five, you get the idea. So I have three of these and I have them ready made. So that is step one. Make all of your base pages. Okay. Now, let me find is that. Look at that cute bunny bunny rabbit clip how cute is that anyway so all right so page one is this page with the double gate fold and it has um, a three by four card that's magnetized to keep to help keep the gate folds down so you have two gate folds and then you have a pocket and then there's an insert that goes in the pocket. So that's what we're going to create. So what you need is 
You need to create two flaps. The first, they're both three and a half by seven and a half for the gate folds. And on the three and a half inch side in your scoreboard, you're going to score it at a half an inch. I'll show you that. So this is three and a half is the short side. Come over and score it at a half of an inch and do the same with the second one. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and fold along those edges, I mean along those score lines and give it a good burnish. Do the same with the other side. Burnish it really with a nice crisp edge. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually take that base page we just made and we're going to stick it's going to connect like this or it's supposed to connect like that so as you can see I tucked that fold into my base page okay so you're going to want to put your adhesive on the inside of that flap so and I do not, um, I don't know about you, all of you, but I do not like to use score tape when I'm making a pocket or a flap because sometimes um, it can get stuck. Whatever you're putting in the pocket can get stuck on the score tape. So here's what I like to do. I'll stick it down and then I'll bring it up to camera to show you. So you want to stick that in there and you want to just right up to the fold. You can see over here, just right up to the fold without going over. You want to set it down and burnish it really well. You double check the inside to make sure no glue seeped out because I have had it seal shut on me. Okay, so there's your first flap. And let's do the second flap. I'm going to put that on the inside again. Lining it up. Close to the fold, but not going over the fold. Burnish and then just double check to make sure no glue seeped out inside the sleeve. And there you have it. Now I cut it just a certain way because I might actually put some sort of trim on the outside of these. Um, just kind of gives you a little peekaboo of what's inside. Okay, so we have our two flaps, and then we need to make the pocket that goes inside. And the pocket measures seven inches by four inches, or four inches by seven inches. And what you want to do in your scoreboard, you're going to score it a half an inch on three sides. Okay? And then after that, you're just going to go ahead and fold over your flaps. Oh, sorry, and you miter your corners. Sorry, I forgot to say that. You don't have to, but I just, you know, I just think it's cleaner. And then what I like to do with the pocket page is I like to take the two side tabs and then fold down that so it's more like a pocket. So see, there's no chance of anything getting stuck. Um, anything that you put into the pocket getting caught up on the flap. So then I put a little dab of glue in each corner and just give that a minute, a second or two to dry. So... So see, um, if you want to put, oh, that's a good view. You can see right down to the bottom. So there won't be anything for the tag to get stuck on. All right, so then let's make sure it fits. If you measured correctly, it should fit perfectly. Yep. And then you can add some glue, again, or score tape. Okay. 
and then you're going to just line that pocket up with the bottom of your base page. So make sure everything closes neatly and give that a nice burnish so that the glue catches. Okay, so there you have it. Let's see, do I have a scrap piece of paper here? So you can see it forms your pocket. All right. So at this point, you can decide whether you want to use magnets to hold it shut. Um, or you could put some seam binding on here and tie it shut, or you could use some, some baker's twine, or you can use some jute ribbon, whatever you want to use um, to hold it shut. That's, that's up to you. Um, I'm going to go ahead... Let me see. I'm going to go ahead and make, put a magnet on. Sorry, I got distracted. All right, so I'm put my pin in my glue. I don't lose it. So you can, these are the magnets that I use. These are the magnets that uh, Tammy sells on Country Craft Creations. Um, they are, what are they? The basic gray large magnets. So I'm going to need one, make it, oh, be careful, it, it jumps, where did that one go? One negative, and one positive, <laughs> one positive, all right, so to hold that shut, I am going to put Take the paper backing off. Right, so the idea here is that this is going to be a three by four journaling card on here. So I wanted to put this on here so that the magnet holds the flap shut. Right. So I'm going to start off by um, putting it, you know, just halfway down, adding it to the left side of the flap. Yeah, let me see. Then just take some score tape. Because I have had in the past these magnets break loose, um, so I like to put a piece of score tape on to help hold it. So then what we're going to want to do is put the other magnet on top, take off the backer, and then I just try to center this as best I can to make sure that I cover, that it's centered, and grab that magnet. You know it's off center on this one, but it's kind of how you do it. There's not much to it. Okay. Once we get the pattern paper down, that'll that'll help hold it. All right. So, all right. So let's go to the next page. Page two. Looks like this. It's the back side of page one. So this is what we just did. We took this. We just made this three by four card. We made these two flaps in this pocket. Okay, and now we are going to make this page, which has two pockets here for three by four cards or tags. And then that's what it looks like on the inside. Okay. Right, so we need all right for the flap. You want one piece of your cardstock that's cut five and a half inches by seven and a half inches, and you want to score at a half inch on the five and a half inch side. So you just creating that tab, and then you just miter your corners. Okay, and then we're just going to fold that over, burnish that score line really well. Just 
make sure everything is upright, which it is. to put the pockets down first before I put the flap in. So we're going to want to create two pockets and we would take your uh, solid colored cardstock four and a half by four and three quarters and you want to cut two of those okay and you want to put it in your scoreboard and score at a half of an inch turn half of an inch and half of an inch so that's what I mean by score half inch on three sides. Okay, so we're just making flaps. We're just making a pocket like we just made um, for the previous page. And I'm burnishing these, folding and burnishing. Let's do the other one. And again, you miter all of the corners or you tab the corners. Some people say tab, some people miter, some people angle. I'm just going to put a little dab of glue on each corner like I did previously. Oops, and that's good. Just to help hold that in place. Do the same on the second one. Let that glue hold. Let that glue catch. Okay, let's do the dry run of this one. So this is that flap we just cut and folded at a half inch. And what we're going to do, we're going to want to put that pocket, line it up on the bottom edge, and so we want it to look something like that. So there's two pockets here and then the flap will open here. All right, so grab your adhesive. Put it on your tabs or your flaps, folds, whatever you want to call them. And you know, fold your flap when you're on the bigger flap, make sure your tab is folded under. Okay, and you want to line up this pocket in the bottom right hand corner, which is what I do, try to line it up there first, set it down, and then take your next one, I am a messy gluer, that's for sure, I don't even use a lot, but it gets everywhere, <laughs> alright, and then next, you just want to butt that up against the previous pocket and line it up as best you can. Oh, yikes. What do I do? And glue that down. You can get a good burnish. Okay, we just created two pockets. And I will show you that. This is a little bigger, but you can see these two individual pockets. So you could put um, tabs in them. All right, so this, you should have something that looks similar to this. You see there's the two pockets. All right, so um, take go back to your, your base page. This is page one. Flip it over to page two. And I'm going to go ahead again and attach this from the inside. Put some glue on it. And then slide that tab right into your sleeve. Again, you don't want to go over your fold line, but you want to make sure you give enough room. Come on now. Hold it 
taken off. Put it into the top. And finish. So that is your second page. So there's page one. You're going to take this off. Open your flaps. There's page two. That flap with the two pockets. Pretty easy, huh? All right, I can't remember if I have. Let me check. Yep, that's magnetized as well. So um, if you want to use magnets, this is where you would go ahead and grab two more. So I just put the plus and the minus together. Okay, take the adhesive backing off. <clears throat> Set that down. Take the adhesive off the other side. All right, so there you go. Just let the page help you decide where you're going to place your magnets. But you definitely want to make sure that you give, you don't come in to put your magnet too close to the fold because you want your pattern paper to definitely cover that. So just be mindful of that. And that page is done. Ta-da! All right, so the next All right, so we just made this page and this page. It was this, as you can see, this side is open because your binding system, whatever binding you decide to do, will go into this side and this side will have a large tag in it. That's page one and two. We're gonna do this as this is page three, this is page four. All right, so for page three and four, we need, whoa, we need to stick them together. Okay, so for page three, we're gonna want two pieces. You have your base page that you, you made previously. Actually, let me put this over here. Your base page. You're gonna want two pieces for your flaps. They're gonna be four and a half by six. That's the bottom flap, that's my top flap. Okay, you're gonna put it in your scoreboard on the four and a quarter side. Oh, did I say four and a half? I meant four and a quarter, sorry. Put that in your scoreboard and on the four and a quarter side, you're gonna score it at one half inch. Okay, so you'll have something that looks like that. Actually, it's gonna to go top and bottom. Okay, so let's go ahead. No, wait, this does say four and a half. Hmm. That's four and a quarter. Yep, sorry, they're both four and a quarter. Four and a quarter, I will fix that. Four and a quarter by six. Okay, so our top flap, after you've scored it and, <coughs> excuse me, mitered your edges, mitered your tab, sorry, angled your tab, mitered it, let's score it and fold it. All right, so your bottom flap will go down here, your top flap will come up here, okay, so we'll start with the top. Again, they're the same dimension. So because it's coming from top to bottom, we're gonna put the adhesive on the outside of the tab. I'm just gonna turn mine sideways. And then just line this up. Line, line up your folded edge with the top of your base page. Get as square, as straight as you can. And then give it a good burnish. Next is the bottom flap. We're going to do the exact same thing. Oops. 
some glue. And then we're going to line that up with the bottom flap. I mean, the bottom of the base page. I'm kind of all over the place today. Okay. And then I always keep something Tammy Merrill taught me. That is, I can't believe I didn't figure out by myself, but always keep a dry baby wipe or a Swiffer cloth is another good one. To just like if the if the glue seeps out, you can clean it up right away, and you don't have to worry about uh, your pages being glued together. So there you have your page. What number is this? One, two, three. So at this point, um, you can add magnets to hold again to hold it shut. Of what I did. <clears throat> I just put a, you can't see it because it's covered up, but I had a piece of the chipboard um, embellishment and I put a, um, a magnet on the back of it and covered it with uh, some black cardstock so that, and you can't hear it actually on this one, but you don't have to necessarily use a magnet closure. You can, um, like I did over here, you can use some seam binding to close it and tie it closed or um, if your paper is thick enough, if you have a good quality paper, it'll just kind of weigh it down and hold it shut. But I kind of like to have all the flaps and all the other junk and um, to help keep it all closed. So there's that page three, page four. So you see how very simple, oh, oh, no, actually we're still on page three. We need to do the belly band. And that belly band should be three inches by seven inches. And on the seven inch side, we're gonna score it at a half of an inch and six and a half inches. So that each, each side has a half inch tab. Then go ahead and angle your corners or miter your corners. To just get rid of some bulk so that you're gonna be putting a lot of tags in and out of this belly band so you don't want your tags to get stuck. So see how, what it does there with the pocket? See right there? Um, makes it easier to slide a tag into. But if you don't have issues, I always have issues with that. But if you don't, then you, you know, do it or don't do it. <laughs> it's your project. Okay, so you can decide where you want the belly band. If you want the belly band in the center, or if you want it down a little lower, or you want it up a little higher, that's up to you. I just try to kind of eyeball it. I try to eyeball it in the center and stick it down. Did I just put it on the wrong side? I put it on the wrong side. Darn it. Ooh, don't do what I did. <laughs> Stop. It goes on the inside of your two, your bottom and your top flap. But that's okay. Nobody's going to know it but you and me. So don't, don't panic. Just add a little more glue. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not going to edit that out. It's an embarrassing mistake, but it's not that bad. All right. Now it's in the right place. And you can go ahead and burnish. See, I got some glue on it. Right? And then, then you would add your magnets and your closure. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Next page. Is there are four flaps on this one. And then one big space for photos. And I just added some... Some of the cards and tags, the cut aparts and tags um, from the collection. So you're going to want four pieces for your flaps, four pieces of cardstock that are four and a half by six. And then just make sure that I didn't write that down incorrectly. Yep, four and a half by six. And on the four, to, four and a half inch side is at the top of your scoreboard, you're going to score it at a half of an inch. Okay, so all four of them will have a half inch tab. So let's score, I mean, let's fold and burnish those score lines really well. Let me 
show you what I did. So you can see here, we have, oops, or well now you can see, we have two flaps on the bottom that I lined up with the bottom of the page, and then there's two flaps that I lined up at the top of the page. So let's just go ahead and start at the bottom. Make sure that we are on the right side. Again, your seat, your binding opening is on your left. Flip it over. Okay, so let's just take one of our one of our flaps. Add your adhesive. So we're gonna line that one up. Bottom left corner. And along the edge. Okay, then we'll take a second one. <clears throat> Line it up opposite of that first one. Lay along. Oops. Lay right along the bottom there. Okay, so you see how that comes together. Take the third one, and we're just going to kind of do the same thing. Start on the side. Line that up in the top corner, and you want to be very careful that you don't go over your fold of your first flap. So, you scooch it in just a little bit. That a good burnish as well. All right, let's turn it around and let's do the last flap. Okay, we're going to line up that top left corner. Without going over that fold. Oops. Okay. As you can see, then you just flap, flap, flap. And see how that lines up. The bottom ones line up like this, or you can do it the opposite way, however you want to have it set up. But um, so I put my magnets. Where did I put my magnets? One there and one there. Okay. So, unless you want to use again ribbon or seam binding or you know whatever kind of closure, that's that's up to you. I'm going to go ahead with magnets again. I'm going to grab. So far, this will be three sets of magnets. And I don't think I think I might have one more set. <clears throat> Okay, so decide how you want your pages to lay. I'm going to have them done like that. And oh, I do. No, no, no. These buggers are strong. Okay, so it goes that way. I'm going to take off my backer, off the top magnet. I'm going to put it right here. Okay. Then we're going to do the same thing we did earlier, just to remove the backing here. Get, press it down so it connects. There we go. And then we take some score tape. Just for a little added security. Some people think it's wasteful, but it makes me feel better. So. There you go. Second page done. So here is your first page with your gate folds in your pocket. There's your second one with your flap and your two pockets. Here's the third page with the two flaps and belly band. And here's the fourth page with four flaps. So 
So you can get <clears throat> eight full size for four four by six photos um, on this page. So <coughs> excuse me. So that's that page done. So now we're going to do the third page. It's a little more difficult. It's actually not, it's not difficult. You just need to kind of take your time. Um, we're going to do this. I don't know, is this considered an L-shaped pocket? It's that shape. <laughs> um, so it's pretty simple. So we're going to, again, you're going to need your base page. Um, let me see. Am I missing a page? Uh-oh. What do I do with it? Oh. Sorry, hold please. I think I'm missing one of my. Should be two of these. Anyway, we'll figure that out when we get to it. Okay, so here's our base page. I like to call it the naked base page. So the front <clears throat> is that L shaped pocket. All right, so what you're going to want is. Uh, so what is this? This is page five. Sorry. You're going to want a sheet of your base cardstock cut seven by eight. On the seven inch side, you're going to score a half inch. You're going to score on the one, one half of an inch on one of the long sides and the bottom. Okay. And then what we're going to do to form that pocket, you know, take your ruler and from this score line, you're going to measure over one inch and put a dot. You see that right there? That's on the top left. And on the bottom right, from the score line, you're going to score two inches up and put a dot. Then you're just going to take your ruler and connect the two dots. You can draw a line if you need to. Right? Um, I just drew the line so that you could see it. And then you're going to place it in your trimmer, your paper trimmer and line up those two dots along the cut where the blade will cut. And that leaves you with these two pieces. This piece you can do away with. So here is what you're left with. So let's take that bottom flap, fold it and burnish it, and the side flap, Gonna fold and burnish. So I um, angled those corners. You're gonna want to go ahead and do the same. I didn't do it on this one. That's all you do. Okay, so let's grab our base page. Here's our base page. This is gonna line up. Oh, what did I do? Yikes. Oh, please. Oh, I need to score this side at a half inch as well. That's what I didn't do. So we need to score this for this little two inch side. Oops, can't help if you could see. This little two inch side, score that at a half of an inch. Okay. Then what we're gonna do is Hold on that score line. Oops. And then tab those corners. Good gravy. It didn't have to be that difficult. Okay. So that's what it should look like. Let's pray that it fits. Yes. That makes more sense. All right, so we folded and scored along those, or we folded along those score lines. Let's just go ahead and form a little pocket. Again, if you'd rather do it your way, do it your way. Okay, so we just put some glue. Some glue on this side. Great. 
right, and I like to line up the left corner, bottom left corner. And it just kind of helps it all fall into place. And let's finish. Sorry if I'm shaking the desk. So, and there you have your pocket. Erase the pencil marks. The rest will be covered up with the pattern paper. So there's page five. Right? Easy peasy. Turn it over. Page six. Page six is sort of two triangular two triangular flaps with the open space for a big photo in the middle. Okay, and that looks like, is this right? I can't believe that I lost that flap. I had it. Hmm. Is this it? No, nope, that's not it. It's just unbelievable. Anyway, sorry. All right, so we have our, what is this one? I swear, I don't know what that's for. <laughs> anyway, okay, so um, we have page six, and so we need two pieces that are five and three quarters um, by six and three quarters. Yeah, let's take this one. Hmm. Well, I might just have to stop this video. No, that's it. That's just so weird. Okay, I figured it out. So for page six, you're gonna want it to, you want one piece of your cardstock. You're gonna cut it at five and three quarters by six and three quarters. Then you're gonna cut at a half inch on two sides, and that would be the And then what you're going to do is you're going to take that piece of paper and put it in your scoreboard and you're going to go from this top, um, the top edge of this uh, half inch score mark to the bottom of the page. So you're going to put it in your, the paper in your trimmer. And you're going to line up this corner with that corner. Basically you're cutting the page in half on a diagonal. Okay, so... Then you end up with something like this, okay, um, and you're going to want to, it's going to look like that after you fold it, you're going to cut off that excess right there, okay, and fold and burnish really well along that score line, do the same for the right side piece. As you can see, I had it marked left and right, and I was using the wrong one, which is why I was so confused. All right, so let's go ahead and put our glue on the tab. And if you you don't want to cut these on this flap on an angle, you don't have to. You can just put it in there however you want. You can just leave it a full size sheet of paper. I mean, a full size flap. But I think it's kind of cute, so I'm going to center this. Oh, it's about a half inch up from the bottom. Like we see right here. And then just go ahead and put that down. 
and then use that, close that flap. Oops, I have to trim that a little bit off of that one. And go ahead and use that flap. Now see, this is over a little further than my other one, but I think that's okay. Um, the other one, I centered it on the page, but I think that looks fine. So then you go ahead and use some more glue. Then I just try to line up the two cut edges, kind of like put the puzzle back together again. Okay, and then what I would do at this point to hold this shut again, you could use seam binding, you can use ribbon, you can use jute, you can use twine, you can use magnets. Um, I actually put a magnet. Did I even use a magnet? Yes, I put a magnet in this closure right here. Um, you can cut yourself a little piece of, use one of the cut aparts in your, in your collection. So this is two and a half inches by two and a half inches, this red piece. Um, but I'm not going to add mine because I, I don't know what pattern paper I'm going to use yet. So um, you can go ahead at this point and you can cut out the two and a half by two and a half inch and put your magnet on. In fact, let's do that. So let me just... Get one piece that's two and a half by two and a half. I'll use the scrap piece. Oh, okay, let's see, two and a half. Two and a half. Again, this could be an embellishment. It could be anything that you want it to be. All right. Grab a set of magnets. At this point, you from I'm sorry, I keep getting off camera. I moved my camera a little bit, and now it's kind of all over the place. I'm so used to moving over to the right. Okay. So place it right in the middle. Actually, I maybe shouldn't have done that. That'll work. Okay, you can determine where you want this. You can have it go this way if you want it to go this way on a diagonal, I mean a, a diamond shape, or you can square it off. I think I'm going to hmm. I need it to be under here. So So I'm just trying to straighten it out. Okay, there's my score tape. Right. Let me just add the score tape in that, I mean not the score tape, add the um, journaling spot or your piece, your embellishment, your piece of ephemera, whatever it is, will hold those two flaps down. Okay. And then you have room. You can journal on here after you put your pattern paper down, or you can leave these blank without any pattern paper for journaling. Um, but I will cover these two with the pattern paper and definitely cover the inside here. Um, but you can definitely get a really nice five by seven photo in there or a couple of the four by sixes. You can also put a photo on here, but whenever I decide what pattern paper I'm going to use, I will cover the magnet up with pattern paper. Or another trick you can do if you don't want to put pattern paper on it, you could take a one inch circle punch and um, punch a circle and then put that circle in the same color cardstock, that'll hide the magnet. Or maybe you don't mind the magnet showing without the score tape, a lot of people do that too. I just like to cover it up. So. There you have it. Those are our pages. 
See, pretty easy. Oops. The magnets are sticking together. So, I gotta keep wanting to pull it. Anyway, so the base pages, they're all done. They're ready to decorate, right? So next, what do you say? Let's, because it's easier, let's do the two pockets on the inside back cover. So I think, I assume at this point, you've already made your cover or like I did, or you made your own cover, you know, whatever you decide to do, it's your, it's your project. So people just like to put a pot, a simple pocket on the, on the inside covers. I used to do that too. I'm trying to cover my glue before it gets stuck. Okay. All right. So, okay. So my computer just shut off, not my computer, my camera just disconnected for some reason. Um, so I actually was showing you how to do the two pockets on the inside back cover. So what you'll need for that is two pieces of cardstock. The first being three and one half inches by nine and a quarter. You're going to put that in your scoreboard, score it at a half an inch on three sides. Okay. Then miter your corners and then angle the tabs. Okay. And then you can also want a second piece that is two and a half inches by nine and a quarter. And you put it in your scoreboard with the nine and a quarter side on the long side, as it would be called. Score it at a half inch here, rotate it, and score it at a half inch again. So you're scoring half inch on two short sides. Okay. And then all you do, I'll show you this again. <laughs> all you do is form your bottom pocket and then attach it. Here, make sure it's centered and it's, and that will form your first pocket. Then you're going to take that second one that's two and a half inches and you're going to fold your tabs over and then place that just above the first pocket. All right? So what I was saying when I realized, I think I set something on my mouse and I shut it off. Um, what I was saying was you'll cover this with pattern paper of your choice and then um, you know, you can see the seam in between the two pockets. When you get, when you're ready to cover this one with pattern paper, you're just gonna make sure you cut an extra half of an inch. So if this is two and a half inches, I would go probably to three inches and then tuck the extra inside this pocket and glue it down. That way you'll have one pocket, you can move this now. <laughs> that way you'll have one pocket that's this, this long, this deep, and then the second pocket you can see that disappears. It goes all the way to the bottom of this pocket. Okay. So then the next thing to do is we are going to create, or the last part of this is we're going to create our waterfall. So this is over here. I, I'm calling this a vertical waterfall because they go three inches by four, or sorry, three inches by four and a quarter. And I cut, so I cut six pieces of my cardstock. I'm telling you, the, the, earth, the uh, universe just does not want me to do a, a tutorial today. <laughs> just don't know why, I don't know why. Anyway, these are three and a quarter. Oh no, I'm sorry, three and three quarters by four and a quarter. Okay, because most people use the three by four cut aparts. So we want three and three quarters by four and a quarter. And however many waterfall pages you want, I did six. So, and then also you're going to need a base page that's cut to a waterfall base is what I call it. Four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And then we're just going to put that in. I use my scoreboard to help keep everything lined up. Okay, so... You don't have to angle your, your corners on here because it's not a, your tab. I'm sorry, you don't have to miter your tab or angle your corners because it's not a pocket and it's going to get covered with pattern paper. So, and then I like to do this upside down. So I will take the folded edge, the bottom left folded edge, or the, yeah, the left folded edge and line it up, up against my scoreboard so that it's straight and it's so much easier it helps me keep everything straight 
So there's the first one. Take the second one. Again, you can use blue for this. I just, I just think um, square tape makes it go much faster. Um, so you line up the folded edge of the second one right where the flap of the first one ends. So see, and it's nice and straight on both sides. Okay, number three. And give it a good burnish. Number four. Number five. Burnish, burnish, burnish. And the last one, of course, the last one is the one that had the writing on it. Ay, ay, ay. And we're going to add number six, flap number six. Okay. So, see, a lot of people are intimidated by it, and I used to be as well. But once I started making that base page, so you can see it's going to kind of flop up like that. And just try to go back and burnish all the folded edges. Okay, and that's fairly straight. No overhang on either side. So if you have a scoreboard, it helps tremendously. So. Let's bring our book back in. <clears throat> so I have, in my project, I have my waterfall and the top and the inside left cover. Um, you could either put it there or you could put it on the right side, and, you know, at your project, whatever you want to do. Again, I, as I mentioned, I did mine as a horizontal waterfall. You could also put it this way and have it vertical. And you could add more pages to your water, more flaps to your waterfall, whatever you want to do. You could do it this way. You can have open from top to bottom. Again, it's your project. You do how you like to do it. So I think I came down about a half of an inch. Um, and then I just put a stopper here to put extra um, little um, tags in. Um, I don't know if you could fit two. No, you couldn't fit two vertical ones here. Uh, you'd have to cut this one a little shorter than the four and a quarter inches. But you can always put a pocket down here. You can do whatever you want. But I'm going to do the same thing I did in my original book. And then what I did was cover the, the bottom of the base with all this score tape. So remove that backer. Okay, I'm going to turn my book like I tend to upside down so I can see what I'm doing. Make sure I have the right way. And then I'm just going to come down, try to line it up as best I can. Get it as straight as I can. Okay. Now at this point you can make a, a closure with a strip of paper and a magnet to hold it shut. Um, you can use seam binding like I did to hold it closed and I think that's what I'm going to do on this one. But um, you can always take Oh, let me think if I have, I don't have one ready at hand to show you, but um, you could put a piece of one and a half inch cardstock, glue it here, and then make it, what is this, maybe five inches? No. Um, I would do, yeah, five inches. Yoke, um, 
score it at a half of an inch on the short side and that will stretch all the way across and then you can put a piece of ephemera or um, or something I don't know um, a one and a half inch square whatever um, to put a magnet here and it will hold it shut well I am on a struggle bus today guys I apologize um, anyway so then what I like to do after I place this down is come here back here to all these half inch gussets and then just, you know, give it a good burnish to make sure it sticks. And then burnish this whole piece. Um, you can also, you could probably get, uh, no, probably just one more, one more page, um, one more flap. Um, you, you can also put a small pocket or like two small pockets or one big pocket across the bottom. Um, like I said, I just left mine blank and added a stopper to catch um, some of the overflow tags. That's how I did it. So anyway, and I just realized I shouldn't have put that down until I put the pattern paper down. Uh, but that's okay. It'll it just look like it has a nice white border. Um, so yeah, so that is that is how you make my school days mini album. So again we have these three base page, um, three base pages with a five and three quarters, seven and the, five and three quarters by seven and a quarter inch tag that slides in between. It's a nice tag. You can get um, a couple big photos on there. You could get, you know, if you have a, a selfie camera or a printer, whatever that's called. Um, yeah, you can get a lot of pictures. It looks like there's not much room, but there's a lot of room for a bunch of photos. So, yeah, that's my school days. So, I hope you give this a try. And if you do, I hope you tag me on social media so I can see it. And um, that's all I have for today. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think I should do any more today. It's been rough. Anyway, um... Reach out to me through social media or my email address on YouTube, however, if you need, if you have any questions or you need any further assistance. Otherwise, thanks for stopping by. Thanks if you made it this far through the tutorial. Thank you very much. <laughs> and um, I will be back. Um, I'm not exactly sure when I'll be back, but um, I think I will be back in July uh, with another project. So until then, take care and thanks for stopping by. Bye.